Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, so that means today is film room day. Since it's the draft season, we're all talking about draft prospects the Chiefs could possibly get, and right now we are focused on where they're going to be around the first round. So we're talking about defensive end prospect today that I know most of you have probably heard about. We'll get to him in a little second. This is the RGR Football Channel. My name, Daniel Harms, film analyst here, and I'm going to get into one of the prospects that I do think can find his way to Kansas City, given everything that could possibly happen. You never really know with draft prospects. You never know how the boards turn out for players, what run's going to happen, where they're going to end up. But I do think this defensive end prospect, based on what I've seen, has the possibility of moving down the draft board a little bit. I've seen him mocked a few places a little bit higher than I would have expected for a guy that's of his ilk. Let's just say that. But without any further ado, we're going to talk today about Trayvon Walker out of Georgia, number 44, defensive end, interior rusher. He played pretty much everywhere on the Georgia defensive line, lined up at, you know, one tech, three tech, four tech, five, all the way out to a nine wide in some cases. So he has experience playing all over the defensive line. Very big body, 6'5", 275, around 280. That's, you know, the size that uh, Tershawn Wharton is. So he's a big guy, much bigger then a lot of the defensive ends that you see around the league. And the dude is a big, long player. So he's got long arms. I would imagine probably anywhere between 35 and 35 and a half inch arms is what we're looking at. Maybe 34 to 35 and a half. Probably what we're going to see. He's going to be a speedy kind of guy in terms of where he's going to run in the combine. But it's all about your play speed. Okay, he has a good get off and first step. It's not as consistent as I'd like to see. But... Walker has the type of athletic profile that is my guess as to why he's been mocked so high. He doesn't have the production. He doesn't have the pass rush plan as we're going to see in a little bit here with his tools and everything. He still needs to get some tools in the bag for him to be able to really be successful in the NFL. But if we look to Odefe Owe, Otto, you know, who plays at Baltimore this past year, who really exploded under the scene as a guy who wasn't touted to be one of the best pass rushers in terms of Technical, technique and actually having the process down out of college last year. But he comes in his rookie season and he gets, I think he had nine sacks this year. If you guys are, I don't have the number right in front of me, so don't quote me on that. But still, a productive pass rusher. But the athleticism, the length, the speed, all of it was there for always. So I could see teams taking that kind of chance on Trayvon Walker. But we're going to go ahead and get into the tape because I think you guys are going to like what you see. Um, we'll get to how I see him as a prospect in a little bit, but let's go ahead and jump in. So to begin, we have Trayvon Walker down here at the bottom of the formation to the right, and this is the most important part of his game, the thing that's going to translate immediately into the NFL. He is a dominant physical run defender, okay? Very, very stout at the point of attack. He can do a lot of things with his length, his speed, and just his power. Like, he can take on any type of Polar, that's one of the things that I really like to see is he can condense the line and really ab just abolish this center pull. Look at this. He, he's kind of re recoiling right here, coiling up to hit that and then strike. Boom. And it all explodes. He explodes through the hit. And this is really what you like to see. Obviously, the Michigan offense here with J.J. McCarthy at quarterback, they're looking for QB read option. They don't do a whole lot of passing out of the formation. So, you know, Walker just condenses here makes it impossible for you to get that other puller up through this this gap and then he just comes off of it because that's the kind of player that he is he's fast he's physical just you know he doesn't he's not even able to get a good body on him and then he just swallows up Hazan Haskins for no gain on this play just an incredibly physical force in the run game very very stout can set the edge well has no problems were cut taken on uh, pullers. I love that about his game. It's really nice to see a defensive end that can actually really come into the NFL right now and be a solid run defender. Like, not just a a guy you rotate in and out. I think he could actually be a starting defensive end in terms of run defender. Like, that's how good I think he is in the run in run defense. So, you have him here more of the along a three tech position right here. Alabama. 
a lot of the tape I have on him is coming from the Alabama game. I watched five different games to start out at Clemson. I went into the middle of the season with Auburn, and then I finished his season with Alabama, Michigan, and Alabama. So I get a good sculpt of the player that he was at the beginning. I think I'm kind of seeing exactly not a ton of growth throughout the season in terms of his pass rush uh, moves and everything like that, but, but I think that everything that we can see on, on film from Walker shows you the power and the length and the speed that we're going to get to here. This is one of the most viral plays I think that went on from the national championship. So he's going to run this play down from the back and he really, this should have been a touchdown, but you see, he realizes right here he's inside. So he sees this happening. He's just turned around. He's not really extending a whole lot because he assumes that this is going to be going outside. So he's really not trying to do a whole lot, but as soon as he sees this guy try to come up here and run around, that's when you can actually start to see the acceleration kick up into gear. To have that kind of speed and acceleration, you know, at 6'5", 280-ish, probably about 280, it's impressive to say the least. And I know, like I said, this is this was viral everywhere, so we're not going to do a whole lot of uh, looking at it, but it was fun. He's a very fun player, physical, fast, and, you know, that kind of play gets you paid in the NFL when you make a play like that and it's not your, technically your responsibility as a defensive lineman. But again, all about the effort and the acceleration, the closing speed that he has, even against wide receivers and quarterbacks, it's very, very important trans translating to the NFL level. Here you're going to see him on the edge against Clemson. This is their first game of the season. And one of the, the things about Walker that I, you know, I like to see a couple different moves he has. He's got the long arm right there you saw against that left tackle. But one thing I don't like, watch his get off. It's slow. He he kind of works his way around. I don't know whether he's taught to do that because of the releasing running back. Or excuse me, the releasing tight end. But it's just, it's a little slow. I like to see that first step get off be a much more impactful if you can create that get off because we know he has the acceleration and the speed if you can create this get off okay you can actually accelerate forward and get that long arm into the chest of the tackle here he does a good job of still collapsing the pocket a little bit moving this guy back right into the quarterback's lap but he doesn't do it fast enough that's one of the things that i've i struggled with with his tape is that he has a lot of different strength and tools and he can convert speed to power when he's doing it but he doesn't do it enough and again this is an interesting formation here for his four point stance as a defensive end playing on, a sh on the, the outside shoulder of the tackle i'd like to see him in a three-point stance maybe angled a little bit more towards the tackle like his hips maybe moved out this way just a little bit but it's not a my opinion it's not a great stance to come out of to really pat rush the passer um, so again, pad level for me is a little bit high on Walker, but that all comes into because he's just basically standing up. He doesn't really rush. He just kind of lets himself get up. And then that long arm, like, so you can see the power. You can see he has all of that. And I like the long arm on, on Walker. I like his ability to actually locate that long arm and jab it in his inside his chest and really do a good job of extending and pushing guys out of his way. You're going to see here inside again, more of a, maybe a two one tech ish type of, of uh, position right here and that's going to be what this end up coming down to is like i said he can go just about anywhere and georgia does a good job of mixing up their pass rush looks their blitz looks and i really like to see him going from this a gap over to the b gap and and things like that it's nice to see him have that kind of get off the speed to be able to do that and i enjoyed that out of his tape so once again, nice to see him as an interior rusher, something that the Chiefs value as well. We know that they like the uh, the different types of blitzing, different types of moving guys all over the place. You can play him on the outside, you can play him on the inside. They have Mike Dana who did that in college as well. They like Chris Jones, obviously, who does both kind of the same kind, same kind of thing. And they, they really like to move those guys around. So I think that Walker would be a fit in that aspect. But the looping ability, he does get to take advantage of the stunt coming through gets basically a free pass just to do what he wants to and then another thing that georgia did well stunting very good at stunting and he takes advantage forces a, a fumble here they don't get it 
but the fact that he's able to take advantage of some of those with his speed and athleticism definitely speaks to his nature and why he can go so high in this draft and his range of outcomes as a prospect probably vary a little bit more based on that so now you see him up here a little bit tougher to see him but he's right here on the right side of the defensive uh, defensive line, left tackle. That's where he did the majority of his work that I saw was over the left tackle. So it gives you the best idea that he's going against some, some of the better competition at his level. But look at the pop in his hands. When he actually gets out of his stance and extends those arms in the chest of the tackle or anybody, look what he does. Like, it's good. Pad level. This is what I'm talking about with his pad level. Like, look at this. This is exactly how it needs to be, especially if you want to transfer speed to power. You, you know this is going to be a run play. I mean, th it doesn't matter either way. You can transfer all of this into multiple different things. And the, the speed to power, just five yards behind the line of scrimmage, just takes that tackle and just railroads him back. And you get to see a better angle right here of, of Walker really doing a good job of taking that speed to power. Again, get off that first step. The shoulder pads don't move a whole lot. It's level with the ground, you know, in terms of perpendicular. And he just takes his arms, just extends them into that tackle. Does an excellent job just bull rushing him back there. Obviously, he doesn't make the play here. But again, when you force a running back to have to go around it and make this make the angle, or excuse me, the wide receiver here, not be able to cut upfield so much, he's not working this way. Taking this tackle back this way instead of having him kind of up here walling you off, it creates a different angle. So you allow other defensive players to be able to fill gaps properly. And when you make those angles further and not more direct, it's so much easier for defensive players to get there. And that's what he does here. I know that, you know, all at the end of the day, it doesn't matter so much, but still, condensing angles, showing your speed to power taking this tackle and just pushing him out, pushing him out, pushing him out. It's all stuff that you need at the NFL level. Consistency is really where I had some some struggles with his tape. It's not always there. Now, here he is more of a three-tech position here on this left side. <clears throat> the right side of the offensive line, excuse me. Like I said, he was everywhere. And I like watching him move laterally. I think he has very good lateral quickness and uh, the ability to see guys coming. So he's going to go from this B-gap all the way to the C gap, essentially. So this is a, a B gap. This is an A gap, if you guys don't know. B gap and C gap. So that's just how they label it. Always how it how it is. Obviously, that makes this a C over here. And when you're able to loop across, he's trying to get into the B gap, actually, but he sees Evan Neal coming over, so he just kind of sidesteps him. When you're able to be laterally quick and just kind of flow with the direction of the guys that are coming at you, get them out of your way. It, it speaks to his athleticism. It speaks to his vision, too, because he uses his peripherals while keeping his eyes on the quarterback to see that Neil's coming over to get him, so he just sidesteps him out of the way. It's nice to see that on tape. It's nice to see him be able to translate that. That's something that definitely translates to the next level as well. Having that lateral agility, lateral, quick, lateral quickness, we'll see if he tests well in that area. But at the end of the day, when you're able to show it on tape, in-game situation, that's what's more important, especially against probably the top tackle prospect in the NFL. And, you know, he had his fair share of battles. He's down here now against Neil once again. He had his fair share of battles. And this is just, once again, showing his stout ability in, in the run defense. You're, I know it's tight ends aren't always the best at blocking, but still you're getting a double here from... Like I said, one of the best, if not the best, tackle prospects in the draft and a tight end, and he just doesn't get moved. That's so apparent on his tape is he can take on a double when he needs to. He can just find the ball, and that's what you're seeing right here is that he's looking for the football using this left arm to just extend it and really kind of bench press Neil up and still keeping the tight end at bay with his right arm. So he's taking on blocks with two separate hands. And the ability to disengage when he finds the ball where it's going to be going, that's also very impressive. Just discards Neil. Look at him. He's off balance. He threw him off this way. And then he can just find the football. Like I still think he struggles at times to locate the ball from time to time. But this rep is very impressive. 
one of the more impressive ones that I saw, and it's against run. And that's what I want to see him use a little bit more. Like, look at the strength. You need to use that a little bit more in your pass rush. Get that involved. Use your chops and your rips and your uh, push and pulls. That's something I didn't see on his tape at all, is any, almost any push and pulls. But you have that kind of strength as a player right here against one of the best tackle prospects in the draft. Use it to your advantage at the next level. Then he, he needs to get with a defensive coach, a defensive line coach, maybe a new guy that Chiefs just hired to be their defensive line coach who's worked with more athletic guys. Use these skills that he has to his advantage because if you can get this all down and you can really bring out the best in him, he has the ability to be one of the best pass rushers out of this entire draft and be a top 10 kind of player based on his athletic profile. That's what this is. We're, we're trying to figure out what he can do best and where he's going to go based on his athletic profile. Here he is again against Evan Neal. Like I said, most of his tape that I tried to get on here was against Neal because that shows you the level of competition, what he's able to do, and, and how evidently he needs to be able to work. Like right here, ends up getting to the quarterback anyway, but the process is flawed. This is the biggest, the, the biggest problem I have with his tape, okay? See it one more time. He gets stuck a lot, and he just doesn't know what to do after his first initial uh, plan doesn't work. So here... You're going to see he just kind of, one thing that he does a lot of is he doesn't like to ed, to bend the edge. He's not great at it. I think that he could if he's taught properly, but he likes to get inside and try to use his hands to extend. And maybe that comes with a little bit of edge presence, but he wants to get inside. He wants to use his arms to extend and get you off of him. And when he can't do that, specifically against better tackles, it causes him to lose focus and try to figure out what to do next. So right here. He gets stuck. Neil's actually dictating what going, what's going on here because he turns him to the outside. He's like, okay, I'm going to make you go this way. So he turns him, and that's where you know Bryce Young starts to feel pressure everywhere else. And this is a, a lost, it's a lost battle on Walker. So he's coming this way. He sees Bryce trying to get out of the pocket, and then misses the tackle. Instead of trying to maybe make a little bit more sure tackle, he instead goes a little bit more for the lunge and can't finish. Another thing that I did see a little bit was him not finishing some of these sacks. But more athletic quarterbacks are becoming way more apparent nowadays. And it's it's definitely harder with guys that are smaller, sleeker, just being able to get them to the ground. But pass rush plan needs work, okay? Um, he, it does need some work. And now here he is again down at the bottom of your screen against Neil. This is where he flashes a little bit of that. Bend, I was talking about some more pass rush moves. And, and like I said, he's not the best bendy guy in the world. Uh, he's not going to bend that edge. But what you're going to see here, there's the extension. And then you see the long arm. Now we're looking at, rip, or excuse me, the uh, chop. Chop again and rip. Needs to do that just a little bit quicker. And that's what I what I was trying to focus on at, on his tape. Because you can see, like I said, that he likes to extend, get in there and extend. And then it's, his process is a little bit too delayed. Like, he should already have been chopping. As soon as he extends, he needs to look and chop, okay? He needs to look for that chop and needs to look to get that rip earlier. All It's all a little bit of a speeding up process. And get a little bit more sink in the hips, okay? Use the athleticism that you have to bend that edge, to condense the edge. Find a way to get around that tackle, okay? Right here. This is where I'd like to see... Just a little bit more shoulder dip and get try to get underneath his arms while you're ripping all at the same time. That's how you really get that tackle to, to start to lunge forward a little bit. If you can sh shake him loose with your shoulder underneath that while you're ripping, that's how you create a little bit more bend, get around that uh, edge a little bit quicker. So all in all, I think that Walker has, like I said, all of the athleticism required for the position. I think he has all the talent there to be able to be an excellent defensive end in the NFL, the process is still lacking and the mental aspect needs a little bit of work. He needs to be a little bit more in tune with what his abilities are, his talents are, his skills. Use some of these rush moves that you, you saw, like that push-pull essentially, where he engages with Neil and discards him off to the other side of the field and use that in your pass rush game. So we need to see him get into a much better defensive philosophy. If he goes somewhere like for instance, in Arizona with Vance Joseph, who seems to use players in terrible ways. That's why you see Isaiah Simmons being played out of position. If he goes somewhere like that, I don't think that he has 
as much of an, a higher upside. So I think that landing spot's critical in this position. And being with Kansas City, and I think this would be a place, if you find a way to bring Melvin Ingram back, somebody who has athletic traits like that can really help him develop. Maybe you bring in an Emmanuel Ogba, you draft him a little bit higher, and you find ways to rotate him in and out early. You get these things done quickly get him understanding that a little bit more he's going to be a very good player again i do believe he comes in as a starting defensive end definitely against the run he is a very very sound run defender i actually have him projected as an end of the first probably closer to the top of the second round pick when it's all said and done but at 30 i think you can take the chance on these athletic traits that walker has i'm not sure where he's going to actually go but I do know that based on his production and his tape, he could slide down the board, especially if maybe he has an off day testing and doesn't have live up to the athletic standards that he set for himself. So I'm interested to see where he's going to go. I'm interested to see him test. And at the end of the day, he could be a very, very good prospect. And at 30, I think you can take a risk on a chance on a guy who wasn't super productive in college that can come out into the NFL and be a very productive player. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're going to do another offensive player maybe next week. I'm off all next week. I have vacation in Colorado. I'm actually going to meet the big guy, Ryan, on Friday next week. So I'm sure that he's going to have something for you on Wednesday. I still have a, a Tuesday video already recorded. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night for Ryan and Seth on the Chief in the North. We're still going to try to have content for you guys li lined up throughout the week. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this preview of Trayvon Walker. Defensive end out of Georgia. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.